My family was a long line of dairy farmers. My dad was the last to be on that farm and do all that hard work where you milk cows twice a day and the whole thing. It was a really pleasant growing up. So I come from that farming background, but my dad was the first to go to a university, both my parents actually. And so once I found this geology thing, I decided I think I need to uh, leave Wisconsin. I was at the University of Wisconsin and I ran out of money and I decided I would go out west and work in Glacier National Park in Montana, just pumping gas, Lake McDonald Lodge. And that's where I discovered geology. I just took day hikes on my days off with fellow co-workers. I was living in the mountains for the first time. and So it wasn't a professor, it wasn't any kind of uh, important uh, geologist that intersected with my life. It was just that amazing experience of living in the Rocky Mountains for the first time and learning just a few things about geology and I was hooked. I had that great experience in Glacier Park and then went back to Madison, Wisconsin and took Geology 101. Almost every class, they're talking about the Pacific Northwest. They're talking about the West. They're talking about the mountains. It's like, all right, well, why am I here in the Midwest if we keep talking about them? Why don't I go out there? So I went to graduate school in Idaho. That was a great three years of learning a lot, finally kind of owning this geology, kind of uh, internalizing the geology as part of who I am. Many who get into geology realize that the Pacific Northwest has everything. And I do mean everything. So this is like Disneyland here. I'm here on purpose. This place is unique. The menu is full. 30 years ago, people were visiting my office. They had questions about the geology of the area, and I was new to the area 30 years ago, and the internet wasn't a thing yet, so it was very hard to find information. And so I felt like I wasn't serving the public. They were asking questions about Saddle Mountains or Crab Creek or the Columbia or this big boulder at Ephrata, and I didn't really have much to share with them. Now we're cooking. So about 10 years ago, I knew there was enough of this interest where I thought, well, maybe I'll just make a public lecture. Maybe I'll just lecture downtown. And then a few people said, well, I missed your lecture. Can't you like video record them and put them on television or something locally? Tonight we're going past that and we're gonna get into a controversy or a scientific debate about Mount Stewart. And that's the part that's got me a little nervous. So if the layers are tipped, that was a shock to me, that people would want to sit down for an hour and watch this lecture on a screen at home. So one thing led to another, and I started making videos specifically for YouTube. Two-minute geology, two-minute geology. Hello, young people. Coolies. What is a coolie? CWU saw that there was something going on and that people were very interested in this. Let's fund this a little bit and start making uh, these five minute programs called Nick on the Rocks. Crack the mysteries of the earth. Discover the energy that drives a planet and explore the secret world below with me, Nick on the Rocks. I don't think there is a goal or a plan necessarily. It's just fun to communicate this stuff. In the initial few seconds of the eruption, a gas-charged blast up to 500 miles an hour came up and over this ridge, sweeping over everything. Hey, this is a tight fit. I'm a big boy, and even I can fit into the crawl, as it's known here. This is a vacation paradise with boats and sun and water apples oh thank you and wine what's the geology behind this scenery there's no shortage of topics even if we go to the cascades there's 47 different shows and different angles just in the cascades alone so there's no shortage there and i like it here i want to just keep doing stuff here in the northwest
I've had a lot of fun with all this video stuff. This is Tacoma, Washington, and that is Mount St. Helens. No, it's not. Normally, this bedrock is thousands of vertical feet below a bunch of glacial till. Seattle Fault and the land lifted abruptly was 900 AD. Or even like giant Tootsie Rolls, crinkle cut French fries. These brown milk duds. <laughs> We've done 75 of these since mid-March. I did do some stuff this year during the pandemic and I kind of fell into this world of live streaming on YouTube. And I'm so glad that you've tuned in this morning. We are gonna be talking about Southern Idaho and a particular place that's now a national monument called Craters of the Moon. Open, almost corny kind of loving kind of thing. Okay, just a little bit of personal history if you don't mind. Um, so I drove out from Wisconsin you want to find a good place to eat, Pocatello? Everybody was pretty stressed out, so it was this kind of an organic community. So I kind of leaned into that. Reality minus three, why is the Eastern Snake River Plain there? Did the super volcanoes- I've got people watching away? from around the world. Memories. We're all ages, we're all different countries and cultures, but everybody's welcome here. Try my hardest to keep learning new things, and that is where the energy comes from for me. People just get off on the enthusiasm. They can feel that vibration, that something is going on here, and I'll stick with this program for as long as they're doing it. <laughs>